52-year-old Travelling Evans left a note on the front door of her antique shop. The note read, back in two minutes. Travelling exited the shop, vanished without a trace and was never seen again. <sighs> I got my green screen back. Hey doll, this is a new name for me, Travelling. I love it. Uh, let's bring it back. If it left, maybe it's still relevant in Wales, but I may mispronounce it now and again. It's like, it's tricky. <laughs> Traveline. This was supposed to be a short, quick, easy episode for me to write, record, edit, and upload before I start work next week. But I got so carried away with this case. It is so interesting and uh, fascinating. A, a rabbit hole, like, um, I hope you enjoy. <laughs> In the days leading up to her disappearance, Traveline had been away with her husband, Richard, a retired maintenance engineer. The couple were renovating their holiday bungalow where they planned to retire near the coast of Rudland Rudland on Wednesday, the 13th of June. Traveline returned to the tiny village of Clanglothlin. <laughs> I looked it up. I think I'm saying it right. A gorgeous little town of like 4,000 people where Traveline had lived her whole life. Three days later, on Saturday the 16th of June 1990, Traveline parked her dark blue Ford Escort estate 200 yards away from her shop on Church Street. She opened Attic Antiques at the usual time of 9.30 a.m. She had started Attic Antiques only a year ago. It was a lovely sunny day and the town centre was bustling with Saturday shoppers. Over the next few hours, Traveline had about 25 friends and customers like pop into the shop. According to her friends who had visited, Traveline seemed relaxed, happy, and had even made plans to go out that night. However, at about 12.40 p.m., a smartly dressed man in a blazer was seen talking to Traveline in Attic Antiques. Shortly afterwards, Traveline left the note on the front door of her shop saying, she would be back in two minutes. But Traveline never returned. This smartly dressed blazer man has to this day and never came forward, never been identified and never like traced or tracked. And it's not even known if he is involved in her disappearance. He could have just been a customer. During her last known movements leaving the shop, it is known that Traveline bought an apple and a banana and was spotted crossing nearby Castle Street. A banana skin was found in a bin back in Attic Antiques. It is believed that she must have returned back to the shop after her purchase. However, without eyewitness or CCTV, this assumption has never been verified or concrete or confirmed. Traveline's handbag, car keys, jacket, along with more fruit and flowers that she had supposedly, assumingly, intended to take home at the end of the day, were also left in the shop. And her little blue Ford had remained parked where it had been all morning. The last confirmed sighting of Traveline was about two hours later, near her home on Market Street at 2.30 p.m. Also at this time, 2.30, her husband Richard was down in the local pub having drove back from Rudderston. After 2.30, there were two more unconfirmed suspected sightings of Traveline. At 2.35 p.m., a woman matching Traveline's description was seen walking out of town along the A5 towards Corwen beside the Riverside car park. At 3.45, there was another potential sighting, this time of a woman walking into Park Avenue from the direction of the River Dee. At 11 p.m., Traveline still hadn't returned home and Richard officially reported her missing. From what I have read, <laughs> from what I have read online, people seem to think that this is too late to report your wife missing, to sound the alarm, but I totally disagree. Mostly people go missing for days before they are reported to the police. In my opinion, 11 p.m. is very soon, and especially in the 90s before mobile phones, people would just just go
go off all the time. Remember the one with the, with the stowaway boys? They were gone for like two days before their parents noticed or didn't notice. Basically, he noticed after a few hours. I think that was pretty fast acting. So the investigation. Every household in Clathglothlin, as well as scores of people from further afield, were interviewed. More than 1,500 names were checked and 700 cars were inter interviewed? <laughs> Eliminated from the inquiry. No money was ever taken from Traveline's bank account and it appeared she didn't have any on her when she vanished, possibly ruling out that she had just up and left ran away, indicating to police that she was most likely abducted and murdered. On the subject of money, Travelling actually received £10,000, £24,000 in today's money, in like an inheritance will type thing from an ex-lover, a lover she had taken while still married. Oh dear. And yes, this information did make police suspicious of Richard. Was he jealous, angry, greedy, or all of the above? More on that later. One man, let's call him John, reported to police that on the day before Traveline's disappearance, he saw a tall man with big staring eyes acting strangely. The strange man walked up Market Street staring then just turned around and walked back up the street. The following morning, John saw the strange man again. John was going up the horseshoe pass. There was a camper van oddly parked on the verge of the grass, instead of using the lay-by on the opposite side. As John approached the van, the strange man he had seen the day before exited. It was definitely him, says John, as he was wearing the same clothes as the day before. John's third and final sighting of the strange man was on the day that Traveline had disappeared at 12.30 p.m. Around the time that Traveline was buying fruit, John was driving back into town when he saw the same camper van parked at the Quicksave supermarket car park, a two-minute walk from Traveline's antique shop. John's description of the man bears a striking resemblance to serial killer Christopher Halliwell, who has been described as a master of disposing bodies. Could this be the smartly dressed blazer man or someone completely different? Police did investigate this strange man, but they couldn't find anyone matching him or the camper van. Searches of the River Dee, the canal, mine shafts and caves in the Clangothlen area were carried out, but no trace of travelling was ever found. An artist's impression of the blazer man was drawn up and circulated around during the time of the initial investigation, but nothing came of the initial investigation in 1990. In 1992, Woodland in the World's End area was searched after a tip-off from someone claiming to be a spiritualist medium. Please. Nothing was found, obviously. In 1993, police sniffer dogs searched a canal bank after another crazy woman wrote to police stating that she had an overwhelming feeling that Traveline was nearby. I don't think that the police should be searching areas and spending all this money on feelings. Are you kidding me? But then, wait, if this woman is a little bit crazy, maybe it is her way of confessing. But like, so yeah, I suppose they do have to search just in case it's her way of letting them know what she's done. I wonder if mediums have ever been, mediums have ever been killers. Stay tuned. Yet again, nothing. For Richard, his wife's case for years was cold. Until in January 2001, police reopened the case again in the hope new forensic techniques would suggest fresh evidence. And bam, Richard was arrested that June and later released without charge. Damn, but it is usually the husband. 
the case was cold again for nine years. The case was re-examined in 2010 on the 20th anniversary of Travelling's disappearance. A year later, it was reported the police were looking into a possible connection between Travelling's disappearance and convicted serial killer Robin Regus. Robin was given a life sentence for the murders of three men in 1994. It kind of seems like they're pulling at straws, not the same MO. So yeah, a few months later, the police ruled out Robin and the case was cold again. Tragically, Travelling's only child, Richard Jr., died in 1999. He was a police sergeant in his early 30s and had tragically just had his own child, Travelling's only grandchild, which she never met. Maybe. As apparent sightings of Travelling Evans alive and well have been reported in London, France, and even a remote town in Australia. But Travelling's family were always convinced that she was not the type of woman who would just run off with a new man, which many people have speculated. Since she was unhappy and did have affairs in the past, who was the blazer man? The family also point out that Travelling didn't seem to take anything with her and has never made any contact with family or friends, as far as they know. Travelling's younger brother, Len Davies, says he will never stop searching for his big sister. But from the get-go, the family have always feared the worst. Richard believed that if anything were to come to light after all these years, it will be by accident. Why would you say it like that, Richard? It sounds so suspicious when you say it like that. In recent years, and perhaps after Richard Sr.'s death in 2015, a woman who knew him, Lynn, spoke up. Lynn said the Evans were definitely not happily married, and Travelling was not fulfilled in her life, which is probably why she had so many affairs. Well, so many. I don't. She, a, a couple, multiple affairs. It could be two. According to Lynn, after Travelling's disappearance. Richard would come into the local pub with this sheepish, guilty look on his face. Richard would open up to Lynn about most things, but never once said to Lynn, I miss her, I love her, maybe she did leave me. Did she run away? It seemed that Richard wasn't that upset. He even got rid of Travelling's carpet and furniture. This woman owns an antique shop. These are not the actions of a man waiting for his wife to return to him. But why? Does he know she left him? Or does he know she's dead? In 2019, police dug up the bar at Rudlin, Rudlan Golf Club, acting on information from two brothers claiming to have seen human remains under the floorboards. However, the police carried out their own search and found nothing. And the brothers claim the remains must have been removed before the police got there. This case is over 30 years old. I don't think anybody's returning to move evidence at this point. That's an illogical argument. Then, a few years later, in 2021, Travelling's bench devoted to her in the town was vandalised and it had writing crudely scrawled into the plaque. It's hard to read, but it says, in memory of Travelling Evans, vanished the 16th of June 1990, found Rudlin Golf Club, the 14th of March 2019, removed the 19th of March 2019, or IP. A similar message was found a year later on a different bench at an abandoned 200 year old miner's cottage on a hillside in Prestoton. The brothers deny having anything to do with either of these plaques, claiming their houses have been vandalized since their discovery. I suppose they're the victim. Honestly, I think they're just clout chasing. They just want attention. Conclusion. Here are my unrequested, unwarranted, and irrelevant thoughts. 
I don't think that Richard Evans killed his wife, Trevelyne Evans. They were both seen at 2.30 p.m. and he reported her missing at 11 p.m. Assumingly, he also called friends and the hospital and these calls all would have been verified by the police. There is no way on earth that Richard would have been able to kill his wife, hide her body, hide the murder weapon, destroy evidence, clean the scene of the crime, clean and check himself for marks and make phone calls all within like what, seven-ish hours? And this is also done after driving an hour from from one town to the next, then stopping in for a drink or more at the pub. Also, their house was a terrace house in the town like it wasn't in the middle of the country how could he have gotten away with a murder with no witnesses seeing or hearing something and 11 p.m is not that late 11 p.m in the middle of summer is not that late i mean it only starts to get dark around what nine i just think it's so implausible i think either traveling was abducted and murdered by a drifter or somebody in the town who knows although it's a very small town or perhaps hopefully she ran off <laughs> i have a reason i suppose i'm a bit of a romantic traveling started her antiques business only a year prior was she using the business as a way to squirrel away money saving a new life with her new love blazer man eh would she leave her child who was in his early 20s maybe 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 she didn't like him either i don't know other women have done it other women have ditched their kids well that's what i hope i hope she lived i hope she finally got to live a fulfilling life and had better happier relationships this was supposed to be a much shorter and easier episode for me to write but that is the best thing about true crime people stories and cases still shock us and grab us if you want more episodes like this give this video a like so i know to make more of them thank you to my patreons their names are on the screen and now there is more content over on Patreon. Link below, subscribe and salam. Cheers. Also, this town is so cute. They have a, they have a street called Princess Street. <laughs> oh, the names on this town is adorable. I want to go. It's so cute.